Hi, I'm Sudo. Welcome, welcome back. And we had some surprise balance news in addition to Super Adventure Box dropping. This may not seem like a lot of notes, but they were pretty impactful. And I would like to go through it as well as maybe uh, get people to put their pitchforks down for a couple of these notes as far as um, features and things that they've changed. So big notable stuff. I'm not going to go through all of this again. I'd like to defer to somebody like Muckluck for all the news, but Super Adventure Festival, lots of new rewards as far as world polish goes. Uh, Jackal Rental Post, probably want to grab this for your guild if you don't have one already. Very cool. And Cosmetic Inspection is a new feature. Love it or hate it, it's in the game, so you can now inspect other people's fashion, uh, as well as their dyes, just not their weapons and uh, PvP in world versus world for balance reasons. Some world polish items, and let's talk balance, shall we? This will be a quick roundup, probably edit it through on the channel, but let's jump into it. World vs. World, um, they explained a lot of changes. They normalized a lot of the capture zones for World vs. World, uh, as well as changed a couple of exchange options as well, just to get through the brief overview of this. This is really good. They don't actually have World vs. World updates that often, so it's really cool to see them doing stuff with the game mode, um, you know, that they hardly have ever touched in the past. It's really awesome. Profession skills. All right, so this is my one and only gripe with this patch. They don't have little blurbs explaining. And the last time they had a patch, their little blurbs were outdated and didn't explain most of the changes. And you know, if you have paid attention for any length of time, my biggest complaint is they don't explain their changes or preview them or explain them in their previews. But let's go through it. Profession skills. Engineers first. Not all the professions got touched, by the way, just as a brief aside um, or a brief pre preview. Engineer, Gleam Saber, fixed an issue that caused the skill to reduce the recharge of Radiant Arc by three seconds when the Hall of Elite Specialization was not equipped. So again, they're just actually fixing that recharge thing uh, kind of strong if it actually worked there. Photonic Blasting Module, uh, reduced the damage again because this damage coefficient is already ridiculously high. It's still ridiculously high. It's actually 5.0 in PV, uh, PvP and I believe also PvE, but I could be wrong about that. This t used to, no joke, crit for 100,000 damage with certain modifiers. It was insane. It's still insane. It's still going to be a problem. Um, but a lot of the changes for World vs. World that you'll see is aimed at obviously Zerg fightings because that's how they balance. So let's get into this a little bit deeper, shall we? Prime Light Beam fixed an issue uh, could, could, that caused the skill to strike tar 10 targets instead of the intended 5. So again, this is an issue with those tiles that Prime Light Beam is laying down, similar to Scorched Earth. Spoilers. Uh, essence of Animated Sand reduced the barrier and healing power per coefficient from 1.0 to 0.5 in World vs. World only. Short bow over performing a little bit. I know it's funny, but it is, or was. Reduce the initial might from 5 to 2. PvP in World vs. World. Very big reduction there. Um, Essence of Living Shadows. Reduce the initial conditions cleansed from 2 to 1 in World vs. World only. Cleansing too many conditions. Interesting. Um, Essence of Liquid Wrath. So these are all short bow skills. I guess they were juiced a little bit too much. Maybe, you know, similar to Warrior Staff. Also preview hint, hint, spoilers. Um, fixed an issue that caused the tooltip to display longer durations than intended in world versus world only. Uh, Bulwark Gyro increased the cooldown from... I'll be really interested if they're actually fixing tooltips to see what Necro Swords are supposed to be, whether it's supposed to be 700 or the other way around, whether it's supposed to be 450 or whatever it says, right? Uh, Bulwark Gyro increased the cooldown from 20 to 30. Interesting. Good stun break. Uh, very solid skill. Reduced the base initial barrier from uh, 16 to 11 and a base pulsing barrier from 800 to 500 ish in world versus world only and reduce the initial barrier healing power coefficient as well from 0.8 to 0.5 um and pulsing coefficient as well so again these changes are either targeted at the new weapons at bug fixes or at world versus world changes and that's going to be a running theme um pretty much for everything except ranger interestingly enough uh symbol of protection reduce the symbol damage coefficient weird but sure uh, hammer starting to get very good in World vs. World, especially on things like Willbender. Prison Willbender is a uh, quite definitely a thing. Uh, if you've ever run into a Willbender that drops that ring and that doesn't let you leave while they uh, spin on your face, definitely a thing that's happening right now. Um, Mesmer fixed an issue that prevented the shimmering visual effect from appearing on the skill bar for characters using the Mirage Elite Specialization. Hallelujah, the game is playable again after nine months. Uh, they have fixed the UI, but hey, rock on. 
hopefully they can fix Blades Worn soon. Um, as soon as they remember it exists, right? Chaotic Transference. This trait no longer shows Chaos Aura with nearby allies. It now grants regeneration to nearby allies when you apply Chaos Aura to yourself. That's really interesting because this was a huge change when they put it in the game. Um, Chaos Aura is actually very powerful. It's right up there with Shocking Aura. People don't know it applies weakness. It's very good. Um, this is actually a very big change, especially for things like Zerging, where auras are not strippable, and you can apply them out to allies, uh, elementalists. Anyway, Mender's Purity, uh, Lesser Flower Cleanse no longer triggers Resorative Mantras, so a little bit of a Condi Cleanse nerf there as well. Uh, Journey, reduce the base healing from 900-ish to 700-ish and reduce the healing power coefficient. Again, hitting that Mesmer Rifle a little bit um, to chunk down some of the healing. Abstraction, reduce the base healing and reduced, also reduce the healing power coefficient in PvP only, which is interesting because I haven't seen a single Mesmer Running Rifle PV, uh, PvP rifle, but I'm sure there have been some. Um, healing a little bit too much. Ranger, live vicariously. This is the big one for Ranger. Uh, live vicariously, this trait no longer is activated by pulsing healing effects such as regeneration. So if we go Guild Wars 2, live by the... It's always interesting to see what people search on Firefox. Um, when you hear an ally, you are also healed. Seemed a little bit strong when it would actually trigger off of regen traits, even if it's on a one second cooldown, right? This effectively gives Ranger sort of, especially with any kind of healing power scaling here, it gives you adrenal health light um, with any kind of regeneration, which pulses every second. So now we actually have something more akin to intentionally healing, and maybe they can scale that up in the future. Thank you. Good luck to you, too. Um, Flourish, reduce the base healing from seven or 900-ish to 500 in PvE only, which is very interesting because this doesn't really um, belong on a... It, my biggest complaint, at least from a balance standpoint, personally, Ranger Maces did everything. They scaled off of everything. Healing power, condition damage, a little bit, power damage, they did everything. And they also have their inbuilt mechanic. This reducing the healing base from 900 to 500-ish reduces some of that just passive healing you get from bringing a mace not that it was really a problem after they sort of chunked down power range ranger mace uh power mace ranger to where it should be not doing 40 you know 47k on an auto attack chain and healing and applying barrier but still um reduced healing power coefficient as well and reduced the regeneration duration from four to three in pvp only so these are really you know, aimed at making a ranger a little bit more manageable when you're fighting that, like, brawler side of it, which is good because druids were immortal um, and still kind of are immortal. Invigorating Bond, reduce the base healing. Again, this is just for PvE, but yeah, you get the idea with low vicariously. Invigorating Bond, reduce the base healing from 1,800, reduce the healing power coefficient from 1 to 0.5, and reduce the protection duration from 4 to 3. Um, good. That's all I have to say about that. I believe this is the trait that triggers when they uh, swap pets in Soul Beast. I could be mistaken about that. Um, chat will have to correct me on that. Yes, this is the... No, it is the one in Nature... Okay, so it's the one that's aimed at, again, Druid tankiness. It's not the one that just heals them for swapping pets and soul beasts. It's aimed at Druid tankiness and just healing them passively, basically, um, whenever they swap pets. True Nature... That's why you confirm stuff, chat. It's okay to be wrong on the internet. True Nature fixed an issue that could cause the skill to be accidentally cast after activating Festive Nature. Solid. Um, and... Here's the big one, chat. At least as far as I'm concerned. Um, late notes as well, mostly fixing server crashes and Wizard's Vault stuff, but Warrior, right? Let's talk about Warrior's staff. Path to victory, reduce the damage coefficient from 1.25 to 0.91 in PvP only. Reduce the base healing from 900, 2000-ish, 3000-ish to 500, 17, and 3000-ish still in PvP only, based on adrenaline level. And increased, something that didn't actually happen on all of the other healing nerfs, increased the healing power coefficient from 1.0 uh etc to 1.33 which is a fairly significant increase for that um here's the thing chat here's why i say that spoilers i'm actually okay with a lot of these changes for warrior warrior stat was juiced it really was and if something's going to be just artificially juiced by numbers 
as we've seen with a lot of bladesworn damage and with warrior skills in general that doesn't leave them a lot of design space to make those skills good or interesting or actually feel good to use i would rather this change notwithstanding them make the skills fun and good for a warrior to use and that's what they're doing they're letting them largely keep their interactions largely keep their cooldowns largely keeping the sarcasm intended un uncancelable line breaker double animation which i really wish they'd fix but jokes aside they are largely letting staff remain staff and just adjusting the scaling on it which i think is a really good armistice and a step toward making support warrior viable does it make staff, staff warrior viable necessarily with a healing amulet in this patch probably not but this is definitely something they need to do to sort of get to that step right you know get some feedback whether these changes are working and then adjust it from there so I'm actually okay with most, if not all, of these staff changes. Um, going forward, Line Breaker, reduce the base healing from 2,000 to 1,300-ish. Um, increase the healing power coefficient, again, by a lot in PvP. This is actually more than this one was increased by, um, than Path to Victory was increased by. That is huge. So again, if you want to run that healing amulet, you can. You probably shouldn't, but you can. Snap pull, increase the casting time by a very weird 0.15 seconds. This is actually my favorite note, not because of the nerf to snap pull, which I think was fine and still is fine um, based on my, you know, testing and gameplay since the patch, but more that now I know they can increase casting time by things other than one fourth of a second. Cough, cough, dragon trigger two. Maybe it shouldn't have been a whole half of a second, Cal, that you added to the cast time of Dragon Trigger 2. But, Bladesworn complaining aside, neither here then th nor there, I'm okay with that. Bullet Catcher, increase the cooldown from 25 to 30 seconds in PvP only. The cooldown block of shield is also 30 seconds. The duration for Bullet Catcher is 2, so this doesn't just make it better shield, essentially. This is good. Um, they, they have different functions. You can run both of them even. I do on Spellbreaker, it's good. This is the only change in the patch that really made me go, huh, why? And I want to talk about the Scorched Earth thing for a minute here. So as the last, you know, I saved the best for last. I want to talk about Scorched Earth. We reduced the number of targets from 5 to 3 in World vs. World only. Now, this does not mean that, for those who didn't know, um, Scorched Earth will only hit three targets now. It will actually hit up to 12 targets now, but... If I pull the skill up, which I can't do because I suck at multitasking, but this skill is one of the most oppressive in World vs. World, and we talked about this a little bit previously on our stream, right? This skill is basically Dragon Banner. It hasn't been updated on the wiki yet, but it is now going to be split, and it will only hit three things in World vs. World. That is per tile. It throws out, similar to a lot of other skills, um, multiple tiles worth of basically pulsing fields on the ground. However, this skill is different from other skills like Barrage, which has a flat target cap of five, or um, even like, I don't even know what the second pistol skill is in uh, the LE pistol three when you have a bullet, it does two packets of power damage per tile. Um, the reason this is different is because it is pulsing power damage. The Condi damage, even though this is mo called Scorched Earth and is designed around Condi Berserker is mostly ancillary here. The pulsing power damage has always been the issue in World vs. World because it is still very high and it hits multiple times and you could trigger the skill quite quickly if you have a right setup of Berserker. That being said, it's pretty much the only tool Berserker has outside of Arc Divider to actually do damage in a Zerg. However, this tool is so good that they have nerfed its damage time and time and time again, the power damage, on it for World vs. World and it hasn't done anything. So the real question becomes, why do... Why does Scorched Earth not just get its damage nerfed again? Why does Coalescence of Ruin still get to be at five targets? Why does Barrage still get to be at five targets? Why does, you know, the Ellie Pistol 3 thing and Chill or in Water still get to be five targets, even though it's a similar number of tiles, right? And it's because they're not issues in World versus World. It's because they're not doing as much damage. They have tried to nerf the damage on this. They have tried to nerf the damage on this again. They've tried to nerf the damage over and over. And the only reason that my brain justification that my brain can come up with this is they just can't nerf it enough. It'll still be effective at whatever damage power or like power coefficient they put this at. I think it's okay to try. I hope they don't just, you know, warrior bias notwithstanding only do this to warrior if similar skills become issues in the future. But Scorched Earth meta has been 
in existence for a very long time for a reason because target cap shown with scored sh shades is and always will be king in world versus world engagements that being said that's my explanation for this clearly we have a very mixed reaction on the forums to this um i think the tldr at the end of the video is the staff changes are fine the world versus world change is the only questionable one that actually made me think for four seconds but you know do you guys have a different opinion let me know what you thought let me know in the comments or let me know in chat after this i'll be streaming for another um at least a couple hours here we're going to be giving away transmutation charges uh to sort of fuel the new cosmic inspection um feature all night so hop in hang out and yeah let me know what you guys thought again i'd really prefer they do ex updated blurbs at the beginning of these but all of these changes honestly are quality to me even the warrior nerfs are the warrior adjustment scaling rather on staff um but yeah i'll be back for the next one that's our balance news i'm pseudo and let me know what you guys thought cheers i'll see you guys in Tyria. peace out